all of our so that we can have a idea of it. Okay, so this is how it comes when it's a bill. A bill for a law on gender and equitable opportunities for the elimination. Sorry, no, let me, let me just go. The long question explains the bill. No, 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 don't go back ahead. It's supposed to be a bill for a law on gender and equitable opportunities for the elimination of all forms of discrimination in Kaduna State and other related matters. Okay, just go with these uh, bill languages. Kaduna State House of Assembly, aim of the bill, among others, the bill seeks to establish a commission that will serve as a platform for the promotion of gender equity, entrenchment of social justice, and freedom from discrimination in all spheres of life as provided by the Constitution. Monitor, facilitate, advise on the integration of the principles of equality and freedom from discrimination in state laws, policies, and administrative regulation in all public and private institutions. This book. The summary of the bill. The bill is drafted in two formats. These are our bill languages. One with a commission as an implementing agency, while the other envisages the situation where implementation will be could be through a department in an existing ministry. Now, you see, this is just generally, when we say commission, we, we have ministries, and, and when you have a commission, you to have a board of direct, a board, to have a board, a governing board. But now, this, because Kadnasa does not really have funds, we are thinking in such a way that if they will not have a commission, they should, if this bill is eventually passed as a law, it should be subsumed into a one of the ministries of Kaduna State government. Like now, I'm in the Ministry of Justice. The bill may not necessarily come here because it deals with human, humanitarian, and now such a bill will fall under the issue of human services and social development. In other states, you have it as women affairs, in other states, you have it as women and social development. Depends on the nomenclature or the name it is being used. So, those are, we, we drafted it in two ways in which if the government decides to pass it as a law, they can choose any of their both. I know they are kind of, there's no money, so they can subdue it into one of the existing ministries as a department, which this bill can take effect. Please continue. just continue. Okay, the, the bill is divided into eight parts, consisting of 49 persons, but one provides for the uh, preliminary. Okay, this is our, our law language. Let me just uh, move ahead. I want to give a bit of background. Okay, Nigeria is the most populous nation in Africa, with one of the largest population of women in the world. Like I said, though the bill is not centered on women alone, but most of what we'll be discussing would uh, you know, go to women majorly. It is therefore important to address issues that would enhance the lives of women and other vulnerable groups in order, in order to improve the overall national development. Nigerian women are ambitious, enthusiastic, energetic, and promising. They are also among the most vulnerable groups in the society because the culture is most part, in most part of the country is patriarchal, which already has a bias against women. Hence, it entrenches the uh, uh, discrimination against women, youths, Children in all spheres of our national levels, lives. This puts women in a serious position of disadvantage with the artist and attendant effects such as gender based violence and lack of consideration for women in governmental appointments, policies, programs, and decision making, leading to all kinds of deprivation, affecting both the women and the society as a whole. Equitable, equitable of opportunities means those steps taken for a progressive elimination of discrimination direct and indirect, against the pride of marginalized groups, and the creation of policies and practices evolved for equal access to services and opportunities. You can see now, we're talking about access to opportunities, majorly. We're not saying the men and women are equal, but we're just talking about equal access. People, women have been marginalized. That's true. Youths have been marginalized, to be honest, to a certain extent. So it's now we're talking about that they've been deprived after a long time. We're now saying, we're speaking out, advocate that they should be given more room. They should not be marginalized anymore. Opportunities should be given to them. So equity means the process of being fair to men and women. Did you see now? Being fair to men. Because if I go to a certain area, they are saying that it's just women, women, women. Now men can come in and they will even do better than the women in a certain area. But that doesn't change our position as men and women. So uh, fair to men, okay. Gender means, okay. Gender uh, means those socially constructed roles, behaviors, activities, and attributes that a given society considers appropriate for men and women in a given culture. Then here, discrimination. I'm just making you know this term so that we can go on to understand better. Discrimination means any distinction, exclusion, or restriction made on the basis of his or her sex, gender, or other condition, or status. You say this one is mental. Women are not supposed to come here. 
This one is just men alone. Women, go away. And we don't want to hear. There are some tribal meetings that will say it's just men alone. Uh, I know of a pastor here. I don't know Pastor Alpha, this home of refuge or something. I don't know. Some of you that know him. Because of his love for his wife, everything he was doing, everywhere he was going, he was always with his wife. Two for seven. And then he's a keystone holder in his place. He's an evil man. You know, the evil culture is more, more, you know, barbaric than even any other culture. So he went, uh, he, he, when they're having their council meeting in the village, and they'll tell him he's an important figure in their court, in their state, he should call. He said the only way they can, and they don't allow women to come for the meeting. He said the only way he can attend the meeting is when they're allowed to come with his wife. When they tried once, two, they realized that he didn't call. And they know that he's very important and his voice will be, you know, appreciated because of some of the issues they're discussing. They allowed him. And he said, he said that if my wife doesn't come with me, I won't come. And then he stood his ground and they decided to allow him. He's the only one that goes for the meeting. Even the, the chief himself does not go to the meeting with his wife. But he's the only one that will go to the meeting hand to hand with his wife. And once his show issues have been taken, he will ask his wife, my dear, what do you think about this? You know, so that's, you know, he was saying to that it's just him giving the want to make her know that she's important. He's not making her to say that she's equal with him, but he's just saying that, come, oh, you play so much role in my life and I value you. Can we go? So we're just trying, we're just trying to say that some of some barbaric cultures that are having, that we're having society. So you can see, discrimination is any distinction, exclusion, or should be on the basis of this or our sex, gender, or other condition or status, which has effect or purpose of impairing or nullifying the uh, recognition, enjoyment, or excite by any person, irrespective of their marital status, on the basis of equality of men and women, or human rights and fundamental freedom in political, economic, and social, cultural housing, or in any other field. Please go on. Okay, around the world, women, children, youth, opportunities are limited by issues like exclusion, economic insecurity, political uprising, conflict, and gender-based violence. The lack of opportunities and poverty remains one of the great, greatest threats to the chances of these marginalized in developing countries. The need to empower women, youth, and children to live a life of dignity and realize their full potential is connected to providing a, a level playing field and equal opportunity for all. Social empowerment in any society is imperative not only for the personal development of individuals but also for national development. The quality of opportunities is pursued by conscious efforts that conscious effort that promote access to opportunities for vulnerable groups through their involvement in decision making and this requires good policy and legislative action. So it is most effective means that society can address the challenges confronting women and other vulnerable groups. Consequently, equal opportunities and elimination of discrimination is for the overall development of individuals in particular and society in general. Against this background, the bill seeks to establish the Gender and Equal Opportunity Commission and also to ensure the elimination of all forms of discrimination. Please scroll. Next slide. Um, um, existing laws that are similar, that are close to, we have the Violence Against Persons Provision Law 2018. How many of us know about the VAB law? Please, can I say, how many of us have heard about the VAB law? Violence Against Persons Prohibition Law. Okay, thank you, sir. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> no, you are, you are a champion now. So, so it's, it's obvious that we don't know about this. This law was passed uh, about um, five and four, two, four years ago. Four years ago by the Canada State Government. We have it at the national, so many other states are passing it as a law of late. The law is very vital because it seeks to address major violence against women, children, men, look, on issues like when a man abandons his family and does not feed them and goes away. He's liable to prison by this law for two years. A man who abandons, we know we don't know that and we don't take them, you know, seriously. So that's why we don't know. By this law, any man who abandons his wife children, since the responsibility of uh, providing for the home is solely rise on the man, if he abandons his wife and children, if he's been taken to the courts, the sentence that will be passed on him will be two years imprisonment if he's found guilty. So you see, it's a serious problem for men who abandon their wife and children. It's not nice. No religion permits it. Islam does not permit it. In fact, Islam makes it so open that for a man, a woman is not even supposed to be doing anything and be supporting. It's our generation with time as things are evolving that even makes it that a woman can support. Am I correct, sir? Am I correct, sir? Yes, that is it. It's not that most women are coming out to work because they feel that the sole responsibility major that one is specifically stated. I know that because I go to Sharia court and I do a lot of Islamic law in school, so I have idea of some of those things. 
you know. So I, I was saying this that when a man abandons his family and abandons and this bill too, the gender the jail bill provides for that too. So you see there are punishment for men who, who abandon their wife and their children if they are found guilty by the court. It's not that we're not taking this uh, law seriously. So the this um father's and eight persons prohibition law talks about every how to practice you can see from the long title the law seeks to prohibit all forms of violence including physical, sexual, psychological, and domestic harmful traditional practices, discrimination against persons, and to provide maximum protection, effective remedies for victims, and punishment for offenders. To be honest, a lot of 60%, let me, I wanted to say 80, 80% of the perpetrators of this violence, 80% by research and study, is mostly men. We're not saying women are not perpetrators, women are offenders too, because they've been, they've been prosecuted and some of them are found guilty of some of these crimes. So 80% of the offenders are mostly men. So we're trying to change narratives. Thank God we have our religious leaders here. 99% of every one of you here are men. So you can champion this cause of this GOP. You know? So this this just what this uh, violence against persons prohibition law is talking about. And it's go in tandem with uh GOP. So the law also provides for the offenses such as willfully placing a person in fear of injury, prohibition of female circumcision or genital mutilation. Thank God we don't really have it in the north here. Uh, attempted female circumcision, any female circumcision, harmful traditional practices, verbal, emotional and psychological abuse. You know, this verbal abuse, women are, are prone to, to, to that more. Women are guilty of that too. So it's prohibiting it. So all crimes in any form, whether women, men, is prohibited. We also have the penal code law. Of course, the law provides for rape, sexual assault, incest, you know, of late. We've been having series of cases where men are having sexual intercourse with their children. And how old are these children? 13, 14, 8, 9, 10. We have a case of a man who, who in Kachia, a bunch of this local government, slept with three of his daughter, four years, six years, eight years. The medical report said their vagina is as open as a woman that has given birth. So it means the man has been doing it consistently with these children. This one is not, it's not fact, though. It's the cases that we have here, i We have them plenty, plenty, that fathers are the ones sleeping with their daughter. You see a father sleeping with his three years old child, six years old child. In fact, we have one in Kakuri that was recent, recently. The father consistently had been sleeping with his years since when she was 12 years old. Now the girl is pregnant. So it was through the pregnancy of the father that it was the father that did that. She is falling in love with her father now. If her mother is coming out from her father's room, she's jealous of the mother. She'll be eyeing the mother. The mother found the father on the girl one day, and she went to tell the mother. The mother said, "It's not true." And the girl became pregnant. She said, that. "Now the man is in prison. We have arrested him." That's the molestation of the child for goodness sake. I don't know what we are going into as a community, as a society now. And the father will look at his daughter and everything to help. As I say, "Shahawa, shahawa, I don't know what it is." Yeah, You know, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's, it's, but if I give the number of cases we have of fathers having sexual intercourse with their children, it's so alarming. It's so alarming. So those are kind so the penal court provides for that. Um please go on. Talk about girls in the fathers funding their daughters. See, we're going to be real, we're going to say facts as they are. We will not hide them. You see, fathers funding their daughter's breast with their daughter's private, every part of the child that is private, the father is already some of them you have we have a case where a man was given a, a, a a six years, a six month old baby to be sucking his penny. And the baby was consuming his palm. The baby's stomach became so heavy. Uh, the baby has taken so much palm to the extent that when the child went to the hospital, the, the palm has destabilized the child's system. The child died. He was doing it consistently. So the child has got to So the child sees as a toy. Or maybe his mother breast. The child kept sucking, 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 sucking. But the point you will find that the child was just sick and they were wondering what was wrong with the child. Only for it was at the time that the father that it was found that has taken circulated all over the child's body. So you see now that it's, 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 that's why we're calling for this. The essence of this bill, um, okay, content analysis, um, the provisions of this bill are mostly declarative in nature. They are fine expression in other existing places, so that is why having the commission, please go on. Go on. Okay. The bill makes adequate provision for the functions and powers of the commission. This one's uh, um, so generally, um, conclusions and information from the foregoing, it's clear that the proposal, the proposed law will be an important legislation for the state if passed. It's our recommendation that given the weight of tax involved in enforcing this legislation, establishing the commission is the best approach towards effective enforcement and 
getting the right to that is not for the good of the state. So generally, it's, that's why we're calling our stakeholders. That was our only condition in conjunction, in collaboration with uh, UN women, the Canadian Embassy, and all of that. To see that they sensitize pastors, they sensitize church leaders. You will carry this message for us, just as you preach your gospel services on Sunday. I like some churches and I like some offices. These days, what they do now, they have maybe during the service or during the box. I want to watch a station in town. And we have some religious leaders and traditional leaders in the meeting and the community at large. And it was on gender issue, children, trafficking, and all of that. In fact, when we came back the next time, somebody came and said that when we talked to them about it, he heard it in mobs. I was so impressed. I was, in fact, I said, please, I, I'm looking for that man. I'm looking for that uh, imam to commend him for that. That they said they heard it, what we taught in the classroom, that they heard it in the mob. I was so happy and impressed that. That this malam had his own time to even teach them what they taught them about gender-based violence and all the crimes that have been perpetrated in this our generation of time. So you see, that's why we're calling on you people that you go ahead and preach this gospel of this GOP. It's a gospel that should be preached because if it is being passed as a law, it will be advantage to us, even as pastor. If your church is uh, healthy, eh? it means you have healthy members, right? You have healthy husbands, you have healthy wives. If your mosque is healthy, you have healthy. You know, members as are in your mosques and in your churches. So that's why we we are we are we are we are sensitizing you we'll discuss with you on this bill and all of that. But I'm um do you want me to go through the bill with them one by one, they see the provisions or we talk on general based on the background but um, okay. they will, they will know about. okay, so I think I need to go to some of the provisions. Please uh, can you open the next uh, slide? Not this one now. This one is just a brief Analysis, we call it bill analysis, just just analyzes what the bill is all about. But I'm sure from my discussion, you're beginning to get an idea of what the bill is all about, right? Please, are you beginning to get an idea of what the bill is all about? Yes, so it's generally the bill seeks to uh, create opportunities for women, children, youth. It seeks to prohibit all those barbaric practices, all those bad practices. Now, in fact, what about the issue of, let's say, how many children will even have as a couple? The bill provides that even couples should sit and talk about the number of children they should have. I have a case, we have a case presently that they are divorced because the woman took him. The husband says he doesn't want any child again, and the woman now got pregnant. They divorce so, as I speak to you now, they have shared their property. The man, the, the man wanted her to go abroad in the case, he doesn't want any child. Then the woman said, eh, they can go, but she wants a child. Annoying the woman took him. And the man was angry that this is and I'm trying to speak to you, they are divorced today. As I speak to you, their properties are being shared in courts. As I speak to you, the woman has relocated to the US. Now why? Because the woman took him. And the child is for the money. <laughs> eh? It was the man that put the seed inside. But the man said he doesn't want the woman said she wants, and they did not come to an agreement. And that was the cause of their divorce. That was the sole cause of their divorce. So this bill, you see, it talks about can a woman make a decision for herself on the issue of property? Can a woman own property? I have a lot of cases, I don't even want to go into it, that a lot of men will die and be problem for their family. That's why we're calling on pastors. Talk about weed in your church. If you don't, if you have a legal department, call a, call a lawyer in your church one day. Give them five minutes, give them ten minutes. Class from our Christian lawyers, we go to churches, we advocate. So that we can have a healthy society. It's not enough to just be spiritual and then you are dying other aspect wise, you are killing yourself. It's good to be healthy spiritually. The Bible says, I wish I would want to land me, prosper back and live with a good health. God wants our soul. So you see, that's why we're talking, can a woman own property? It's high time, man, husband, buy property in your wife's name. Buy property for them, give them. Allow them to buy when they have the opportunity. If you know the kind of cases we have on a daily basis. Sometimes I get up to five, four, six cases on these issues. Why? Because some of the decisions we make as, as, as husbands and as wives, we don't do it well, we don't sit, we don't dialogue. So this, um, this can I have the second, I think I sent three, some of the bills, you'll see them. I just want to touch on some of the provisions of the so you look at them, then it will be a ground for the discussion. It's not a meeting that will take a long time. But it's for you to be aware of the GOP so that tomorrow when you come, have you heard of GOP? Yes, you've heard. At least you have an idea of what it is and what it seeks to, you know, uh, what the bill seeks to gain and establish in Cardinal State. I'm waiting for it. And also, also, also again, 
If you seek to talk about this paternity leave for, for men, and if you cannot say they have paternity leave for men, two weeks paternity leave, your wife is but the government worker can ask for paternity leave or two, so that you can stay with your wife and not the baby. You know? I, I, I love men who love to do things for their wives. Mm -hmm. I appreciate men. Yes, I celebrate men. See, I am one person who celebrates men. Men that do good things, I, I shout, I make it loud. It's enough of the men doing bad things. Yes, we have men that are doing bad things, but I shout it loud when I hear say a man doing good things. On my own, I go to celebrate the man. Yeah. Without the women knowing. When I say a man doing good things for his wife, I will go, without the woman saying anything, I will say, Sir, I can't for doing this for your wife. The man will say, Tell her she doesn't know her value, you know, and all of that. But truly, it's like that we celebrate good men. Good men who are fortuning, fronturing the, the cause of women in our society. So please, can I, I want to touch it briefly so that you see some of the provisions of the bill itself. I'm just trying to just um, uh, remember some of the provisions um, um, in my head before the slide comes up so that we we'll see some of the provisions of the bill. Right to education, the woman has that right. You know, some men, because your wife did not go to school and you decided to sponsor her, you make it, you let the whole world know that. And the one that played this woman in school. And then when the one problem called, ah, I am the one who that even sent her to school. She, she was nothing. It was when she came to my house, she became something. We have heard that. I will not have her. I need an hour later, and I said, I'm going to tell you. That's what I'm going to tell you. You know? It's the right to education. It's your joy to educate someone. Even if you don't get the glory or you've done something in life for someone, you don't need to sing it and shout it. I've done a lot of cases where the man will come and say, Can you imagine, Marista? I am the one that even put her through school. She's a doctor, she's trying to show me now. Because I, I don't encourage women to disrespect. I always encourage women when a man does something good, amplify it. Amplify the goodness of men. Apply, amplify the good deeds of men. I do that. So, and I encourage women to do that when a man does something good. Sing it. The man pays school, he's telling that well done. Thank you for paying our children's fees. It's his responsibility, but still thank him. If he sends you a receipt, tell him thank you that I saw the receipt. Or we can as well do when we have it. We do it. Good women do that for their husbands and help them out. So that's the call. So you see, right to education. Okay. I think this is the bill itself. Yes, 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 yes. This is the bill. Let's go. I want to go through the sections, the provisions of the sections. Okay, this is part one. Please go back to the objectives. Uh -huh. This bill, okay, so these are the objectives of the bill now. It's clearly stated out, clearly, clearly. Um, okay, we've, we've done the objectives already, so we will go. Okay, so here we are. No, go back to that prohibition. Prohibition of discrimination. Those other ones are elementary, they are in the binary stage of the bill. So, no person, institution, or its representative shall. Either through words spoken, acts, inactions, commission, omissions, laws, regulation, administrative procedure, policies, guidelines, rules, custom of or practices, discriminate against persons on the ground of gender. So you see now, he says persons. He didn't. He didn't even say women. Say persons. So no law. Like now, you put some organization where they hire men and women, and then there's some certain things they say. They can't give opportunity to women. Or a, a married woman, okay, some jobs organization now. You see, they will sell the singles. They specify it. You should marry, marriage status, yes. They will say it's only single they are taking. That's discrimination already on its own. That's discrimination. That's what this place is saying. Either by law, by policies, regulations of a company or any organization, state, country, in any form. Such that a law is discriminatory because the woman is married, so she's already automatically she lost the opportunity because she's married. That's discrimination on So that's why I say no any person. That's why I didn't use woman here now. But I'll be specific because most of the barbaric uh, cultural norms and traditions we have in our states generally is mostly against women. It's not favorable to women. And so that's why we're calling it. That's why this bill is coming up. So that we take cognizance of some of these things and realize that some Practices that some organizations, some businesses do against the person of a woman or a young girl or a youth. You know? Now, job opportunities. Why do people lie with their ages? And somebody is already 
and be something. We want to take the stage to be 22. That's why you see some government press, that are government agencies, government ministry. You see one, oh, you want you should be resting and retiring and sleeping in his house and then his children, not children, he's taking care of him. He's still working. Why? Because he reduced his age, right? Because it is not favorable to us. The society is not favorable because of the age limit. And sometimes it's not because of his fault. Opportunity did not come to him, him or her, at the time he thought to come. So, to get the job, you have to reduce age. It's not justifiable, right? Because if found one thing based on age, some people can be persecuted and we have seen that done over time. Like the military now. For you to be get for you to gain um admission recruitment into NDA. There's a certain level of age you should belong to. If you are above that age, if you apply yourself, you're not eligible. But over time, I think is it last year, the early this year, I don't know if you watched the, the news, some girls were paraded. That they forged their ages and then they fought local governments in Lagos. Kaduna guys and other state guys, those particular guys, were claiming the land and all of these things. It's because of some of this discrimination. You can see, it didn't just say based on, from where back, from whether you're a gender male or female, discrimination of any sort, guidelines, procedures, policies, or practices that discriminate against persons on ground of gender. Any law. Regulation, custom, or practices which constitute discrimination under this law shall be null and void. You, you see, no rule or directive of an institution which is a violation of the provisions of this law shall be enforced against any person. Every person, okay, I want to go to the main, main, okay, okay, don't go from, um, I want to go to the main, oh, sorry, that's great, wait. I want to get to the you just go, go, just keep moving a little. Let me, I want to go to that way. I will not take much of our time. Okay. Okay. Wait. Please go back. Go back. I saw something now. Uh -huh. Please, please go. I want to, no, no, no. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. I see something that I want to. Calm down again. Calm down. Let's go to the session. Calm down. Now, let me see what section is that. Okay. Section 7. Every institution shall adopt temporary special measures as set out in this law, aimed at assimilating de facto. Um, cannot detail as respects maintenance of any possible standard and regulation between persons in such institution, provided that it will go on scroll. Let's go. No, 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 come down, sorry. Okay. Where the position exists under the special provisions under this section. That opportunity be given and information disseminated to all persons widely. If jobs opportunity comes, no, it should not be limited to some certain person or person, certain people. It should be widely open. The measures undertaken pursuant to this action shall be gradually discontinued when the objectives of quality have been achieved. Provided that no special measure shall be in place and be enforced for a period of less than ten years or more and defined. Just go first. Okay. Uh -huh. For the purpose of these special provisions, it shall be mandatory for all institutions of government, public or other entities, to ensure that, in the case of the public sphere, that a minimum of 35% of appointive offices at all levels is reserved for women, while in political office, huh? proactive action must be taken to ensure women actively participate and occupy public office. Now, this is generally for the public um, offices political participation. Even on private basis, you can do that. But what they're trying to say now, back, they are clamoring that for Kaduna State Government now, any government that comes on board, like we have the government of Basani now, right now, right? This place is trying to say that for political appointments, offices in Kaduna State, agencies, authorities, the government should make available 35% opportunity for women. So if this is passed, it means that if this is not implemented, Women can demand that from the government. That's what they are trying to say. Uh, the former governor, um, whether I like it or not, is not my favorite person, but he gave women a lot of opportunity. But I would say a lot. Um, a certain percentage, a certain percentage, women occupy so many you know, government agencies, ministries in Kaduna State. It, and this government, this government is following suit. But what they are trying to say is that at least 35 percent. That's what this law is trying to say. So even if women don't come in, as a government, come in, okay, rather than this agency, 
I should have a woman there because of this law. It enforces it on him to so implement that. So that's what this law is trying to say. If you give women more room, you'll see more results. To be honest, women are not here to come and contend with men. They're not here to come and contend with men. Men have always had it all before. Men have always had it, but it's high time the narrative change because we want to run an all inclusive government and all inclusive states, you know, activities that women are participating fully. Now, for you to contest for presidency, for women, the form is free. But to remove the record that women go through for them to be able to do that. And if they will do, who will vote for them? For governor, I think the form is still free for women. But you see, in as much as it is free for women, do they even have the enabling environment to be able to do all that the men do to be able to get to the height where they get to? So that's what we're talking about. If opportunities are given to them, like now, they want to have a meeting. You know, most of these politicians, their meetings are usually in the night. Mostly in the night. Before even they get to power, before they get to being voted or being elected into office. Their meetings usually are late in the night. So, as far as that's now, who will do? <laughs> Which of our votes allows her to be a meeting that she's meeting till 2 a.m.? Pastor, why is it? You know, oh, but it's just that the enabling environment is not there. We say, okay, Mubasu, I am Mubasu, Mubasu, It's not about saying they've given them, but what are the enabling environments around it for the participation of women? So this is what this session is just trying to say. I wanted to bring this up so that we can have an idea of it that if this bill is passed as a law, it will give more opportunity for women to demand from the government. Oh yeah, put us in the place, a rightful place, or put us in the place. Or even men, now we will champion with men to say, okay, government, this is what the law says. Why not implement it? And women should be given opportunities to head some certain places. Women should be, we should see women more these days now to head some certain agencies, governments, ministries, and all of that. And I did. So that's what was this. Uh, um, so when we presented this to the House of Assembly, my colleague and I, we presented it to the last assembly, and then we presented it to this present assembly last year, November, in Abuja. Ah, they shouted, Paris, are you prepared to take everything from us, the men? Women want to take everything. You know, there was a very serious discussion. You know, to the very, very poor, you make them understand that as a father, let's even leave your wife now. Wouldn't you be glad that you see your daughter standing in one very juicy position in this state? To be honest, how many of us want to see our daughter standing? Can I just have, let me have the example. How many of you would, you, how many of you would want to see your daughter holding a very key political position in Kaduna State? Let me see our house. Let's be honest, right? This state, right? Let's know as we have How many of us want to see our daughters? Please, how to get our response? It's a participatory distinct before we go to discussion. How many of us want to see our daughters be in a very juicy and a very highly placed political position in the Let me just say, I want to, please, I want to get success. So, how many of us want, because some people didn't read the document now, it's a class where I discuss it. So, how many of us want to see our daughters be in a very good, juicy political position in the United States? And some people didn't read the document the first time I said. So, you see, this big general leader, if it is passed, it's not just for you, they know. It's not just for your wife now, it's for your children. It's the future of tomorrow, the future of Kaduna State. Our uh, children who are five, six, seven years today, they will become something very important, give opportunities to them in the state, to rise to the highest one they can get to in Kaduna State. And you will be a proud father and say, That's my daughter. Even if you are not anywhere, you say, Ah, that's my daughter. Can't you see the same name? Even if she's married, say, Ah, that's my daughter. And you'll be a picture of the people that is your daughter. Why? Because that place is an ending position, and your daughter is sitting there, or your child, or your daughter in law, you know, or your son's wife. You know, it's, it's, it's a joy to see that that comes to be. So that's why they are clamoring for this 35% of participation of women in the school offices, in governments, um, agencies, ministries, and departments. Like we have said so many times, most of the opportunities have been given to men. When I was in ABU, we used to have a scholarship back then in Kaduna. I don't know, most of us are school years. We have this uh, bursary for students. I, the president, the uh, former governor, stopped it. But at least as a student of it, every year you get a certain amount from your state. Even when we're going to law school, the money will not really be available for you at that time. But when you come back, the money will be given to you as a state to help your students, which was good. But the former government stopped all of that. That's an enjoyment we get. That's a benefit we get for being Kaduna State, uh, um, in the region of Kaduna State. Now, what they're trying to say is that when boss respond, when I, back then when I knew, I know that most of the people that benefit the boys with which they are men are young boys. If other things come up, other opportunities come, we see that it's the boys that know about them and then we get the opportunity to hear that. Most of the time, you don't see women, you don't see them there. 
So you see, this, that's just what he's trying to say. Scholarship, boundaries. If it's specifically stated, so when you see that the percentage is stated on men, it's not it's not contestable. That okay, if it's hundred percent and they are saying that it's fifty percent for for girls, it should be reserved. So you know that okay, the other fifty percent is going for men. This one is untouchable. So we know that this fifty percent is going to be distributed among the ladies or the women or the young girls that are available because this has not been done. But when you get the legislation, a legislation makes it impossible. It makes the city to demand from the government that this is what the law says. Can you please implement this? So that's the essence of it being passed, if it's passed. But if it's not passed, if it's just a declaration, you just hold it to mouth. And you can't demand from the person who has said it. But if it's signed, you can take advantage and show governor, this is what the law says. Can you implement this? You can demand. It's just that we have not been proactive in our states or in the country at large because of the situations that we find ourselves in. In the case of primary school enrollment, that all eligible boys and girls are compulsorily enrolled and retained in school throughout the school age. In all other cases, a, a, a minimum of 35% is reserved for women. So what they're trying to say is that they're just trying to bring in young girls. They're trying to bring in women. So many times, it was surprising to know that a lot of children in this state that were in that are not going to school. Even in this Angamburu, they're children that are not going to school. I was there, I was in front of my house, I saw one small boy. I, I was so in uniform, MEAD. After I was in the uniform, then the other time I started seeing with all those Yambola. They are like the Apache, the Terahania, what they call them, scavengers. With bath and all of that. I was saying, pass. When I called him, I said, Has he come here? I didn't know his name back then. I said, Come here. Why are you not going to school? He said, His mother doesn't have money to pay school. I said, How much is school? He said, Don't pay your mother. Come on, I want to go back to school. He said, Okay. I didn't see him again. I was seeing him passing. When I saw him, I said, If I told you to tell your mom to come, I want, I want you to go back to school. He said, I told his mother, his mother said, She'll come. I said, How much do you make from this thing you pick? He said, I make 1000 sometimes, 500 I said, What do you do with the money that you need to buy food? I said, you used to buy I said, go and tell your mother I want you to go back to school. He didn't come. I saw the mother one day with the boy on the road. I said, I told you to tell your son to tell you to come. Hey, that son to I went to the house myself. I said, Mama Isaac, I want your son to go to school. You don't want your son to go to school. She was just laughing. I said, I want to help your son. She told me they refused to come. What am I trying to say? The boy is off school. He's busy picking things and we know it's they are stealing things in the neighborhood. In fact, our slap in my neighborhood, the slap where you drive in. They stole all our neighbors' home. The final one, the final is told, stole my house in three weeks ago. So you cannot even drive where, where to. In fact, about five houses in our street, they close. They've stolen all the other neighbors, just my own. Because when my husband discovered they were stealing, he went and enforced and then increased and then made it so good that it was difficult for you to steal. But unfortunately, when one was falling, we didn't know that they were using the rain as an advantage that we woke up with this thing again. So you see now, there's such children not having an opportunity. What I try to say is that both boys and girls. And then you see some of these girls, oh, parents will say they should have married. Instead of continuing to continue, 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 continuing school, they are, they, are, they are making them marry early. 13, 14, some of them. We are advocating that hey, it's good for children to go to school. People will say, okay, you go to the Islamic area, they say it's good to marry early. Yes, it's good to marry early. But we advocate that it's good. If your child goes to primary school, goes to secondary school, when the child is done, at that point, if you empower your girl, if you empower your young girl, if you empower them, when they go to their spouse's house or when they go to their husband's house, they become useful to their husband and even to their children. What are those days where our fathers did the work and the mother will see that the father will bring it in? Yes, as good as it is, but things have changed. Generation is not what it is as it used to be before again. Now it's rock my back and rock my back. That's the marriage that we're having these days because the economy is not falling on anybody again. The burden on the man is much. The liability on the man is much. It's not just his immediate family. The extended family are demanding from him. And he needs to solve all, everyone. That's why they say the burden on the man's head is too much. In my language, they call it chode. I'm going my father will say the chode on my head is too much. That's the load on his head. It's too much because of the things he needed to solve. And that's what most men are carrying. That's why you hear that they'll just say a man's long. It's the burden of the responsibility that is on his head. And sometimes he has no one to discuss with it. He, he has no one. You know, women, women can talk. But men, all things. So that's why we are encouraging that it's good for young girls. Go to school. Don't allow your children. I know most of us here are children go to school. That's why you advocate in your pupils, you advocate in your box, you advocate in your church. Shout it out to your members. Those two children are not going to school, both boys and girls, ensure they go to school. So this is what just this um, thing is trying to talk about the issue of education. In Kaduna State, there's the law for education that all parents must take their children to school. They can't for a father not to take his child to school. A father can be jailed for six months imprisonment for not taking his child to school. It's compulsory. Uh, government school is available, you can um, afford private school. So now he's just trying to make it clear that women, see, even boys and girls, the same, at least should be given opportunity to go to school. 
So, okay, we can put this to this provision of uh, the paragraph A, C. Um, please continue. Let me touch some certain things. Um, wait. Okay. okay, okay, go back. Go back. Go back again. Go back. Um, every institution, including educational institution, shall work towards modifying the social and cultural patterns of conduct of all persons with a view to achieving the elimination of prejudice, customary, and all other practices which are biased, which are based on the idea of inferiority or superiority of gender or stereotype roles. And to this end, every public or private educational institution shall ensure that ensure the adoption of appropriate teaching methods. And curriculum, including provisions of facilities that emphasize the provision of equality of all persons in all circumstances and all purposes, including choice of career, equal participation, and inclusion in all activities of the school or institution. Can we please proceed? Now, okay. Um, the family, as a unit of society, shall ensure that values practices or other forms of upbringing of children, boys and young people in the family and community, or other forms of socialization. It's not discriminatory. You see some homes that because they want only boys, boys, boys they have, they pay attention to the boys more than the girls. And then these days, in this generation, one was shouting, girl child, girl child, what about the boy child? We train the girl to become a good housewife or a good girl in the husband's house. What about the boys? Who is training the boys? Who is disciplining the boys? Who is uh who is uh, making sure the boys are proper as they ought to? In my house, my son's school. I was telling the founder of the Money Foundation, my son is, um, he was nine, he started cooking. He cooks sumptuous meal. He cooked for you very well. I was afraid when he was, I was telling them to want the gas, to want this, to want that. But the point I told myself that if you don't train, when I talk, I'll tell them they will have a mommy. I said, I want you to be a good husband for your wife. That will look at you and bless your mother and say your mother train you well. You just, they will just be laughing. But I said, truly, you have to do it. Now I'm relaxed because as, as early, as young as they are, they cook food. I come back from work and I sit down, they serve me. 8, 10, 13. They are already doing everything. They are boys, but they are doing everything a woman would do. So how will we despair? We say, okay, this one, 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 I used to try I said, I washed her. I washed her. I washed her for my daddy. I did dry cleaning. I did everything any man could do. I would clear the whole frontage of the grass. My brothers would be there and they would say, Look at them. I'll clean the water. I didn't mind that whether boy or girl or they say this one kind of mother and no. So it's high time we start training our children. So all these children will think their gender role is only one kind of mother and they A most places in the kitchen. No. So this is also what they are saying that you should train train them. It's high time that some of these roles that we place to men and we place to women begin to improve on them and make the life better. We don't want the situation where that generation is coming where a man will just sit down and the woman will just be slave, slaving and, be, and then some men. You know, Islamically, if a man is marrying a very rich girl, eh, it provides that the life standard of that girl that the man is marrying is what that husband from her father's household. She's a very wealthy family. She's coming from a wealthy family. And the father has everything for her. She has a driver. She has a cook. It is expected that when a man marries that girl, the life she has in her father's house, that's what the husband should give to her. She can step down herself and say, no, she wants to scoop me from her high house. But that's what, am I correct, sir? Yes, that is it. So, but, you know, the generation that we're in, and things, people are not following, even the biblical injunction, the Quranic injunction that has been provided. That's why society is battered as it is. So you can see, a religious book does not, does not discriminate against women, it does not discriminate against, against uh, women and even men and even children, but it's our cultures, our traditions, our belief system, the gender roles we are putting our head has caused so much havoc to us than what than the good it should be bringing to us. Women are second sons, second uh, citizens. Yes, they are weaker classes, so they are this, they are that. No, it's right that we begin to encourage and then give an all inclusive um, um, responsibilities that we feel that women can do better, children can do, young people can do better, growing them for the future. You see, this generally generally is targeting what is coming up tomorrow. Already what we are seeing now is happening now, right? But this belief is past. It will be beneficial to both the girls and the boys. And you get the generation where people will stand up and say, government, do this for us because this is what the girls say. So, participate fully in political activities, including the right to vote and be voted for in, in all elections, public referendum, and to be eligible for election without any restriction, limitation, or barriers whatsoever. 
the president's house of assembly we only have one woman who won Nairi Munira. We had a conversation with her when we were talking about this bill in Abuja. And she was saying that if you knew the rigor coming from a background of, she's a Muslim, and then the area where she's coming from again, her local government, it was a tug of war. It wasn't easy for her to, to beat the males there and then to come up and then. She, they call that how, uh, what's prostitute in Hausa? Kawa. Yes. Kawa. Yes. Kawa. Yes. 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 You know, all kinds of names. She was called. So what a name? Because she wanted to contest. Can we as men begin to encourage women, support women? And then when they desire, when they, well, because all the men that we voted for, statistically, it has shown that in every election, women vote more than men. Women come out more and vote more than men. I think women, statistically. I'm running a program in Kasu, and the lecturer was telling us, they did an investigation into that. And they realize that women do more than men in every election. So, can we, as men, rally around women, women who come out and say they want to contest? Can we encourage our members to encourage women, encourage the mothers who want to, and be there for them instead of saying they are prostitutes? Then I be Mozan, they shed here, then I be Mona, then I be Mocha, because she's coming out to contest. See, women will be mad, they will be, they will be, you know, all kinds of things will be said about a woman because she's coming out to contest. Can the narrative change? So, a political participation for women. So, you see, this bill is trying to bring up innovations and things that will help us be an encouragement to women and give women more room, give them more leverage to, to excel, give them more leverage to fly, give them more leverage to, 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 to do the things that they ought to do and that society demands that they do, that they be relegated to the background in time pass. So you see, even on the aspect of education, so every woman has the right to go to school, have the opportunity to go to school. So I don't see it on them because I train you so the whole world knows that you are training them. Okay, so, um, education, sorry. Elimination of any form of stereotype concept of the roles of all persons at levels and in all forms of education by encouraging co-education uh, co and other types of education which will help to achieve this aim. The same and equal opportunities uh, to benefit from scholarship bursaries, okay, I've talked about our study grants, and then continue. Same opportunities to access to programs of continuing education, okay, this one is education too. Talk to the education. Let's go. The same opportunities to participate actively in vocation, extracurricular, and other non academic activities of such school, private or public educational institutions, including sports and physical education. Yes, you will know that more of the sports that we have is mostly men, but they are saying encourage women to be involved in sports too. I know that there's a limit to a, a woman can go because of our PC, but it's encouraging when you see a woman doing sports, encourage her. Let her be the best, let her come out the best. That she ought to. Just as we have in other countries. You know, why no one is just supposed to say this one a man she be? You know, we have heard that, right? When no one is engaged in sport, to say this one, you are a man, you are a boy, you are a boy. And, but there are all these beings trying to say that instead of saying such derogatory or discriminating words against the woman, what we should do is to encourage women to be involved, encourage young girls to be involved, encourage boys to do things that will make their life better. Um, Okay, to work is commensurate with skill, competence, expertise, and knowledge, and is treated as an inalienable right of all human beings. This issue of women working, I know of men that have told their wife they don't want to see them work. They're going to provide. I don't have a problem with that. If as a man you decide to tell your wife don't work, sit down at home, but you should be ready to make provision for everything. It's not at the point where your wife is asking you for something and you say, You're disturbing me too much. So if at that point you say you don't want to do anything and she has to stop, then you have made her that. But that's why we're calling on religious leaders. Help us speak to the men in churches. Let your wife do something. Let women engage in something. No matter how little it is. If a woman is empowered, I'm telling you, an empowered woman is an empowered society. Because everyone of us said they are brought up by a woman. Some of our mothers sold the Lord, they sold the they sold the Dawah, they sold the Kuli just so that they can still go to school. Go to the West. Where education is everything to them, a woman will sell everything she can, and you see five of my children are professors. Why are they ahead? Because education is paramount to them, and it gives them opportunity. Education is good, fine. If no school, let the person work, the vocational work, it could be any trade, in any trading. 
I remember my dad is a retired uh, military officer. They went for the burial war in the 90s. I was very small. I could remember. There was no means of communication back then. If you see money, fine. As a woman, if you see salary, if you don't see, fine. There's no way they could even give you the benefits of your husband. So the women are left to fend for themselves and their children. I remember I always say, my mom sold a label. My mom sold a dollar. My mom sold my mom sold a dollar. Everything is sellable. I knew I, knew I used to come and say a by Kindle Boo in Central Market. Just thought of the cocoa. And my mom wanted to give us the best school. And we went to some of the best schools in Kadmasi. She said she don't want us to be in government school. She wants us to be exceptional. With those small, small things she was selling, she took us to better school from the government school. Where she said, no, I don't want to put you in here. Move ahead from here. Other children, compete with other children. Now, her husband was not there. So you could see that she was industrial. So that's why we're calling on Mendy. Uh, this labor right to work is very good. That's why we're singing to our saying that women should stop sitting at home. But at the point where your husband insists that you should stay at home and no work, you have to obey and sit first. And then dialogue with him over time, over time, till he allows. But at the point he doesn't allow, he must find a way. There are online businesses that people are doing now. It's to encourage them. So that's why we're speaking to you as pastors, as ministers, as imam, as malam. When you go back to your church, go back to your mom. Encourage the men. Tell them, let them make their women do things. If you don't want them to go to the normal formal work, let there be a business. Even if it's in front of the house. Maybe it's something she can sell so that she can get something of her own. Sometimes the woman wants to support her father. She wants to send something to her mother. She wants to send something to her sibling. She doesn't have a she will allow the man, give me, kabani. Some of them want to lie. Today they want to do this so that they can take something out of it to give. It's not nice. She be able to have independence of something she can use and say, I want to sort out things for myself, for my family members, for my relative. And it's not of you to box her. Every good woman will support her own whatever she gets. She will not pack her things and go and give somebody somewhere. I was one woman, I, I saw a story of a woman who built a house in Savo here, a very gigantic house. But well, husband, she was doing it with the pocket money the husband was giving her. The mom was giving her good money and she was keeping it, she bought a land. She built, I think, a four bedroom flat, beautiful one for her husband. Then when she brought the man to the house, the man painted. Like, no, he didn't, he didn't know to the extent of the ability of his wife, she could do that. And she presented it to him as a gift. She did the papers in his name. If you have a good woman, it's good to empower her. If you have a bad woman, stay empower her. Probably your apartment can make her to be a better woman. <laughs> Nobody wish for a bad woman. But because we have some women that are just something else. We have them. We are not denying that there are women that are stubborn out there. But we always pray that every woman should be good and she should be good to her husband and to her spouse and her children. And we have them. So that's what we're saying. The right to work. Let women have the opportunity. Encourage them to go to work. Speak to the men. Allow your wife to do something. Empower them. Give them something to do. But the woman who is not working, who doesn't have a job, give, give them capital. So it's an hour. So you have to say, Temeke, so you can't say Temeke, my tanka. Not that Temeke, but Temeke, I don't care. And when we're in school, when we're going to school, as your father is giving you your pocket money, your mother will go to work for that. She won't want your husband to know. I want to know that she's going to ask something for you. Because she always wants you to have the best. So that what the mother may even give me more than what the father is giving. I know that my mom did that. She will hide and give us pocket money so that we can add more to use. So that's what we're talking. If she doesn't have, can she give? Or she'll just be still out of, let me know if the was still, be doing alashi from the money her husband is giving her. Yes. I'll be keeping it. He's still in it. <laughs> Depends on how you are, how you define it. So you see now, this right to work is there in the field. So it's good for every woman to work, opportunity to work. I don't fight men when a man has a rule in his house. We don't fight them. But you dialogue with them if you think that rule is not favorable to the woman. Because today we still have women. I have cases that women come and say, Madam, my husband said I should not work. No, I've been depending on him for everything. Now the man doesn't want to do anything for me. Now he has used this my life. I cannot do anything. Where would I get a job? Where would I get something? I don't have the, I'm not at the age where it's favorable to me again. Not because the man says she should not work. And then issues come up, and before it's come, the woman is left handicapped. She's left with nothing. Why? Because the man says he doesn't want her to work. Or because he's a jealous husband. He doesn't want any man to look at this way where she's going to work. You know, and all of that. So we have that. So I'm not, these things I'm talking is because we are seeing the cases every day. They are happening. And it's the cause for divorce. It's the cause for fight. It's the cause of problem in society. We are seeing it every now and then. Cases are coming to us like as we go to court every day. If I tell you the number of divorce cases that I call a judge, you will shout. Last week, uh, last two months, I was in a church in Redeemed Church. We were talking on the issue of this gender based violence. And then I was talking. A judge who was there, who knows me, she now said, Barista, do you know? I think I'm in Sango here. She said, As from January to date, I have divorced, I have done 50 divorce cases. Just one judge. That was um, April. May. That was May, she was telling me. I said, May. She has separated about 50 marriages. 
Just one judge. That one is just in the magistrate court. What about high court? What about Sharia court? What about other courts that we have in the state? <coughs> Why? It's just because of all these kind of issues. And yet, was say, yet you can't IQ. Yet you can't like that. But what we say is that don't fight him when he says that. Try to look for a dialogue. Look for somebody who you respect. Talk to him and say, it's okay. If he doesn't want you to work, what can you do to empower yourself? Because that small independence for a woman to have something to be able to do things for herself and her family members is there. You can't devoid that from the woman. And then you can't say, as a woman, don't help your parents, don't help the people you want to help. It won't go away. So this right to work, I'm, I'm hammering on it because it's a problem and a part of some of the cases we're having. So a woman should not be discriminated on the issue of not to work. To work is commensurate with skill. So any other thing that you can do to empower women, young girls, children, okay, to equal employment opportunities, including the application of the same criteria for selection, promotion, and assignment of responsibility in employment. We have that happening in most of our offices. And like I have said, some places because the woman will not take them for job. Some places because of a certain age, they will not. So that is even not, you know, right. To free choice of profession and employment. Equal treatment and consideration in the area of promotion. Please scroll up. Job. Please, next slide. Okay, to free choice of profession, employment, equal treatment, consideration in areas of work, okay, right to equal remuneration of persons of equal skill, competence, expertise, knowledge, including benefits, and equal treatment in respect of work or treatment in evaluation of the quality of work. So places to go, they pay men more than women. There are some places like that. They pay men more than women. What we're saying is that such um, art is barbaric. You know, of course, the woman puts in her best and the man puts in his best. This bill is trying to encourage that women should, they should be given the opportunity to, to have the same earnings as the men. Please continue. To so social security, particularly in cases of unemployment, sickness, physical challenge, old age, and other incapacity to work, and as well as the right to be paid leave. Of a woman in employment to maternity leave, of course, at that statement, Kaduna government is one of the best with this maternity leave. For Kaduna state government, is six month maternity leave. In fact, where I work, I was one of the best, first beneficiary of this six months maternity leave. We drafted and part of the team that drafted the bill on that maternity leave for, for women and then maternity leave, two weeks maternity leave for men. And it's so good that the, the, the federal government is four months, but Kaduna state is six months. Meaning it gives the man opportunity to stay nurse the child and they are encouraging exclusive breastfeeding. So that's that six months um, um, maternity leave. It's good. And no organization, no organization should deprive the woman of that. And what I say is that if she goes on that leave, she should be paid a salary as due. Of every protection to the sorry, of everyone to the protection of the person's health, including maternity health and to the person's safety in the workplace. The securing of the functions of the choices and the production and maternity or paternity. Please, can you continue? Can you move? Please, can you move? Next slide. Okay. I bring this church and ensure the protection of all persons against discrimination on the grounds of marriage, marital status, or maternity and accordingly. So you see, on this issue of marriage, I've talked about it extensively. What the woman is married to, she will not be given opportunity. Or even if she's given, some liberty should not be given to her because she's a woman and because she's married, or probably because she's a breastfeeding mother, opportunity should not be given to her. If she shows that she's capable, why not? Not dismiss, restrict, or otherwise impose any disadvantage on any person in respect of employment, contract, or other professional engagement, whether in public or private sphere. Um, and you don't solely of the person's marital status, circumstances of birth, condition of pregnancy, maternity leave, or such other reasons in which the person is maternal or paternal status. Ensure enforcement of maternity, paternity leave is paid, you can see, or operable social benefit without loss of employment, promotion. There are some organizations, the moment a woman goes to maternity leave, we have seen that because cases have come up on that, the organization from there will give her SAP letter. That they are disengaging her. Yes, we have seen that. We have had cases of that. Because she went on paternity leave and they feel that they want to bring in fresh blood or fresh people, they will give them some letter. So they are saying this is a discrimination and it should not be followed. Okay. 
providing necessary support, social service to enable parents in employment to combine family obligations with work responsibilities and participation in public life, in particular through establishment and development of child care facilities in the workplace. At the state government is trying to employ that for these facilities to do that is not available. But if you go to one or two government uh, ministries, they have um, daycare where workers can work with children. So it's encouraging it. So that if the woman needs to give her best and she's nursing, she can keep the child in the daycare within the ministry. When there's a little break, she goes, take care of the child so that you can have a healthy child and as well have a healthy mother whose mind is at rest, knowing that her child is besides near where she is, she can always run to see the safety of her child. And her provide special protection to women during pregnancy in terms of work and practice harm to them. Protective regulations, policies, and practices relating to matters covered in this clause of this law shall be reviewed as often as necessary in the light of scientific and technological knowledge and shall be revised, revised repealed, or extended as necessary. Provision from discretion in health. See now, every institution shall take all appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination against any person on any ground, what, whatever, in the field of health care, including ensuring that all women who are pregnant and within two years of delivery and all children under the age of five are given free and quality health care. Yes, we have it in the health care services we have. We have the general hospital here in Sabo, the other health care in town, and whatever area that there is. So it's free, we ought to get that, but of course, even medical supplies, they are supposed to have them. But of course, it's not functioning as she, as she should. But we're just saying this is what we're advocating for. Please continue. You see, this has to do with health. It has to do with weight. Every institution shall eliminate division against women in all areas of economic and social life in order to ensure on the basis of equality between men and women and the same rights in particular. I just like this place, what is just trying to say is that the economic uh, opportunities, the social life opportunities, should be given to women as well. As much as men have that, women should have that same opportunity too. They should be availed that. The right to family benefit in line with cultural and religious practices of communities. Cultural and religious practices of communities. But such cultural and religious practices should not be harmful. They should not be harmful. So family benefits. Do you see family benefits here now? This goes back to inheritance. It goes back to what a woman should be given, even after the demise of her husband. But you know, we always look at that of the husband, we don't look at that of the woman. Sometimes when the woman dies, instead of her to make adequate arrangements for her husband and her children, the arrangement will be for her own family members. And you see her siblings fighting with the husband and the children because she has not made the adequate arrangement. So it's sad, but it's, it's both ways. You know, we have seen more of it with men, but for women too, I'm not trying in this matter. Please continue. Right to fa okay, family benefits, okay. Right to equal access among all persons, capital, credit, including informal sector, small and medium scale, loans, mortgage, and other forms of financial credit. I want to talk a little bit on this. Opportunities given to women are not as much as it should be. That's why we are clamoring, we are crying, we are saying. We have uh, SMEs, we have um, government agencies that give loans and credit facilities. Most of the time, they want to give it to men, not women. Most of the opportunities for credit facilities are mostly given to men. Grants are given to men mostly. But we are clamoring, and this bill is trying to say that women should be given opportunities too. There should be credit for them to do businesses. If you empower a woman, I'm telling you you have empowered society. An educated woman, sorry, an educated woman, you have your whole children educated. You see a woman doing all kinds of business so that her children can become the best that she can. If she has credits, facilities from government, from non-government sectors, to encourage them. Like the young woman is trying through the money foundation. They are parents of women in business. They are training them. They are giving them opportunity to strive. If a young woman is venturing into even procurement, we know procurement is like bidding for contracts in the states, so that they can have opportunity. Facilities given to them. In fact, the only condition is pushing the two young men to see that at least the government at least sign a policy that will be favorable to women procurement at the nursing. And they're working towards that, hoping that 
the government does not say to do that. So that at the point when women want to, you know, to bid for contracts, I know it's not a, it's not an open thing that people are aware of. Procurement is not an open thing that people really know about. But those who do contracts go through procurement. And if they go through procurement, they get opportunities. And when you get a big contract with the state, you get a lot of money. So if the woman is a power in that spare, it will go a long way. And, uh, and kudos to the money foundation. They are really working so that the national government can, at least, make policies that we favor because the procedure to be able to be picked for you to get a contract for the state is not easy. It's difficult for any woman to fulfill the condition because the money you pay to get the papers, to get the mail documents, to pass through one state to other, is quite cumbersome and stressful. So it's difficult for even most women to make it up. So, but they are working towards it so that the government of Ghana State can at least step it out. Into. If not free, but at least make it very easy and very seamless that people can come in. The woman can easily pick up the phone and say, I'm going to Katipi. If you are aware, Katipi is the Ghana State um, agency that is, uh, that is saddled the responsibility on the issue of procurement, starting a contract in the state. All these shows we are seeing, they must have to go through Katipi and be registered there before they can even be. Uh, awarded the contract to do any government um, projects that we are trying to do. So this is the world, and we are talking about economic um, area, and um, we have to assess, among other persons, capital, credit, including informal sector, small and mid medium scale uh, loans, mortgage, and other forms of financial credit, so they can be empowered. So if you have that, even as a pastor, if you hear it, announce it to the church members and say you are giving opportunity to women. Matter could be told. Just to empower them. I'm telling you, if you empower these women, good mother already. Those of them that sit at home and do good man, you won't be having them do good man because anyone who is busy with his business, will you find time to do good man? If your wife is busy, or if your church member who are women and just lost, even your time to increase now. I mean, Zaka will increase. The give the way to church, the give the way to mosque. It will increase because if they are blessed, that are karma and life. Oh, that are karma, they'll bring it to church, they'll bring it to mosque. If they are giving arms, they will do it more. Why? Because they are being empowered, they are being blessed. So that's why I'm encouraging churches. Speak to the church, speak to the men, speak to the women. Shout out this bill. Talk about the something in town here, and we're hoping that Kaduna State Government to pass it. This bill will empower men. We empower women more. Yes, but we want our women to be empowered. You are not and if you want to empower. She's relieving you of the money. That's the truth. Is every time you want to buy shoes, you say, honey, keep me money. If she says, this is she wants to buy. She will buy for you, she said. She will so find dresses for you. Why? Because she's empowered. But she's not empowered, like giving her the money every time. And she's saving. So you see why the women need to be empowered, right? Why they need to do something? Let them do a little sanaa. Matters with them. Kanana sanaa. They say, Timmy Kesu. I was in a church. I was in a maslachi. Go back to them and say, don't sit down. Matter for them. Those of you that are gossiping. But we go back to the Gulma. But I want to see the Gulma. 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 I need my own now, my king will not have a now. I said, Kaya the sheep, that will benefit us. So that's that's why I took time to talk about the right to equal access among all persons to capital, credit, opportunities for them to do business if they have all these facilities. All persons shall have equal right to keep, acquire, change, and retain their indigestion and no marriage to a man from the I want to talk about this. Please go from another one. Please continue. From another local government or state shall be used against any woman. You see now, my husband is from Benue, I'm from Kaduna State. What this place tries to say that every opportunity that a Benue person should have, I should have it. So many times, women have been denied opportunities because they say you are not from this state. Meanwhile, she's married to that age. And what I try to say, vice versa again, men should benefit because they are married. But of course, mostly the woman takes up the responsibility, takes up the identity of the man when she marries him. When the woman marries the man, she gives up the identity of the man. So what they are trying to say now, women should enjoy. In my practice, in clinical practice, we've had a thousand. Some years back, there's a judge, they were to elevate to Court of Appeal. We have magistrate court, we have the high court. She was to be moved to Court of Appeal. She's from Benue State. Our one is from Kano. And she, she's next in line to be the chief judge of Kano State. Of course, she's a Christian. But her husband is actually a Muslim. But because she's from Benue State, it became a point of contention. Now, the state will comment, the chief judge will comment her, and other people from the state and other judges. So it was a dilemma for them. Will she be the chief judge of Kano State or she should be moved? Now, when it came to Kano State, at that point she wasn't picked. She now had to go back to Benue State, where she was from. And she should go on that. She had to go on that aspect of Benue State. 
There was a challenge, so we have that. And then um, we've had that in Kaduna State too. We had that in the first state where a woman, she's from social state, and then she's not from that state, she'll be discriminated. But what is what is trying to say that you know, as much as a man takes up and marries a man from that state, she should benefit and enjoy the rights from that state. Because people are still told, they say, no, she will not go to her father's place again. She will go to the man's place because that's where she's from. That's where she is identified to be as now. You know, so that's what this person is trying to say. That the benefit a woman should benefit, she should enjoy because she's married to a man who is from that place. That every woman that is from that same community, local government, state, should. Uh, and then what they're trying to even encourage here again now, like foreign uh, women who are non Nigerians, but they're married to Nigerians. They try to say that they should benefit that too. And this law is trying to project that too. Because we have women that are not Nigerians that are married to Nigerians, they should benefit from that. Okay. Every institution shall take into account the particular problem faced by rural women and the significant roles which rural women play in the economic survival of their families, including their participation in the informal and non monetized sector of economy to ensure that the application of the provisions of this law to women in rural areas is very, very important. Women in the villages, women in our local communities, they should be given attention. They should not be discriminated. They should not be discriminated because they are from villages, because they farm, because they are, they, they, they seem to be local, and then we tend to look down on them, and they are discriminated because they are from one place. And some of those trick, I had a case of uh, a woman from our site, we are not from my village, but my tribe. And I was told because we are doing the case now. When the husband died, the husband's family member took her to court and took the children from her. They took the children from her. He said, That's the cost of and the tradition of the children. Now, when we heard, when the case went forth, they followed it. The woman won the case. And the man went on appeal. Started from customer court. But of course, we heard news that. He has friends who are judges of the court of appeal, and they have torn that of the lower court. And now the children did man too. He didn't keep them with him. He took the children to the village. And the children were not going to school. And they now became women. Why? Because the custom and tradition say he should take the children. But the woman wants her children. She's working, doing small work so that her children can go to school. But they took them to the village. The children were not going to school. They were sick and the children were crying. And then one day the two children ran out of the house. Two boys ran out of the house. They now left the girl for her. That is the boys that is their own. They were out of there, they were walking, and one of them matched bike hit the boy on the ground. And when the guy hit the boy, they were just going, they didn't know where they were going, they were just going. And when the, when, when the guy was picked and he said that they don't want to stay in that house, that this is what they are doing to them, they don't want to, they want to go to their mother's house. They said, Where is your mother's house? They told them the village. The bike man rode with them to the house and took the children to the house. And they had to treat that child. And then the man now went to court and said, The man has uh, abducted the children. So we're doing the case presently. I'm going to see justice is done. There's some barbaric culture. Yes, it's my tribal court, but I don't know that that they say that uh, because the child belongs to the man, so the family of the man should carry the child. When the woman is alive, and she can take care of them, and then not most of the people to them. I'm not taking care of these children. So they take these children to all kinds of ill treatment. So some of these uh, women in the rural area, the law is trying to consider that they should be given the privileges and rights and the opportunity that they deserve, not being that children and be thrown out because they feel they are from such area. So we also have. Uh, the right to participate in the identification, design, and implementation of development projects in all levels, benefit directly from social security program, obtain all, all, all types of training, education. Please move. 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 Uh -huh. Have access to agricultural credit and loans. Yes, this is his family city now. We know women farm mostly in the rural area. And what they are trying to say is that they can be given opportunity to If they are sharing fertilizer, opportunity for fertilizer, women should be given. Most of the time, when you see the fertilizer that is being given, it's mostly men. I've always seen that. And they're saying, because women do farm, they should be given opportunity too. If the problem is that the reason why they are clamoring for this is that over time, women have been subjected, women have been neglected. Their interests have not been taken into consideration, even if they have just a minute part of it that they do. Okay, so let's go to section 17. No other rights. Rights in matters relating to marriage and family. No other agency of government, public or private institution or commercial shall discriminate against any gender in any matters relating to marriage and family relations and shall ensure to all persons that the right to enter into marriage subject to right to freely choose a spouse. This is very vital. Right to, to choose a spouse. How many of us parents want to impose 
what we want on our children. A lot of that happened. I'm an activist. I don't play with it. I think last year and this year, I've been able to stop marriages on the day the marriage had to take place. That's because the father wanted the girls to marry before they were. And the girls were under age, 14 years, 15 years, 16 years. If the girl even wanted, let's say from 16, because by the child welfare protection law, it prohibits forced marriage. And if the father is found wanting, if you are arrested, you will be put in prison. Whether in the Islamic society or in the Christian society or in the local or cultural society, this law prohibits it. Forced marriage. Most of the marriages you see break up, they say, I saw one beautiful girl at the Mission of Human Services. She was pregnant. One fine woman, a girl like that. That age of that girl will not be more than 16 years old. She was pregnant. And then I'll just say, I'll just say, fine girl, fine girl. Then the social worker just told her, say, come, come, come. But we have a problem. Now you see this fine girl, you're saying like this now. She's in tears now. Why? The girl that I about to say, you I gave her, divorced her because she insulted his uh, mother, but that he still loves her. He was the one that brought her to the mission that he still loves her, but he divorced her. He can't keep her because he has given her the this thing. She married, he married her very early. What am I trying to say? I mean, that's why I encourage that let the girls go to school. At least when they are done with secondary school, even if you say, okay, you want them to get married, empower them. If they cannot go to high school, maybe university, polytechnic, college of education, any vocational training, let them be empowered in it. Let not be at the mercy of the man. Let anyone not be able to go get in out with a girl, with a young girl. Let the man not be, more so that the father is forcing her. One of them, we discovered that the job of the wedding it was one man from the jail that the father wanted her to marry by force. And they called me. I said, no, it's cannot happen. We will storm that house. We will not fight or dialogue. I went to sit down with the man and said, Baba, if you do this, do this, the law will come up with you and will arrest you. The girl said she doesn't want, and the worst part is that he locked her in the house for five days. I said she was married to man. We sat him down in the house and we explained to him. He said, Bye, you know, as I want another looking. We know you are the father. Yes, the father, the Islam gives the right of the child, the, sorry, the right of the, the child, as in the, gives the father's right over your child. Yes, we know that. But he didn't say she would force her to marry a person she doesn't want, right? We explained to him. Most of them who are Muslim brought down and explained, explained better for him. They never really realized that. If I will explain to you like this and you go ahead with my will arrest you. There and then, the marriage was cancelled and it was a job away. And the girl was saved and we said, let her go to school. And she now goes up a little bit, maybe at more two, three years per age. And she tells her, but then I saw now, now you can do it. Another one like that, early this year, February, he stopped the marriage. The father wanted her to marry his friend, there was somebody that he wanted. Another man, a small girl, he said, no, it won't happen. And we're called another one at the um, our village recently. I'm walking towards that. He said, We're not allowed it. So, what I'm trying to say every child has a right to go to school. Every girl has a right to be educated. Make a choice of what she wants, who she wants. Let her be responsible for her choice. If it fails, she's the one that made a decision. No one can't be blaming the father. I have a friend, unfortunately, my colleague in the university, so now she's even educated. We invested together at a G marriage. The marriage is broken now. After 12 years. The mother wanted her to marry what she wanted. And so they felt the man had money and could sort out everything. My colleague, she's a lawyer, a big lawyer, a big time lawyer who has made plenty of money. The parents thought the girl, the man would give them money. When he married the girl, unfortunately, he wasn't giving them. She was the one that was struggling with her life. And the man is a high top ranking professor in one of the investors in the So, what am I trying to say? Forcing the children to marry somebody. Right to freely choose a spouse is very vital. Please preach it in your churches, preach it in your boxes, preach it wherever you go to. And let your children make a choice and come and give you. You can give them your godly counsel and tell them this is it. Advise them you stay. When I was to marry my husband, my father did not allow me. For three years we battled. My father said no because no is right. That they have culture, they have their I was convinced, I said no. We drag, drag, drag. You correct me, we'll go away. We'll sit down and come up to the matter. I stood my ground. He's excited. Now he is. He's his best son in law. He's his best son in law. And he's blessing me because I didn't fight, I didn't insult, but I just stood my ground. And we stood our ground. See, you know what the person. And they wanted somebody who was on my side. Who was coming? I said, me, I don't want that person. And I want God, and this person has God, and I know I'll be with this person. And my husband didn't seem to have at the time we met. But the other person was working in one of the toughest um, federal government agencies in Nigeria. 
you know. What am I trying to say? That we don't compel our children, let them make the choices themselves. When they make good choices, it will be happy. Sometimes they make their choices and the choices bound up. I'm not saying that. Of course, our parents, you can see beyond us. And I always tell you, to respect the decisions of your parents. But you have to learn to convince them. Let them see reasons why they need to be. Even as at the point when I was married, my father was still squeezing his face. You know, but he's excited now. He's happy that he has a good son. So what am I saying this? So let's learn to be careful with our own interests and our people and what we want from our children. So pastors preach this, and this law is saying, let them make the right choice themselves, not force them. Right to responsible during marriage and at this dissolution. Yes, a woman should have the right to say, this marriage is not favoring me. I don't like divorce. I don't really believe in divorce. I don't want divorce. I'm a Christian. I don't really like it. I don't want it because the harm that divorce does to marriages, it's, it's, it's too alarming. But if it has to get to that point where spouses will kill themselves, I will tell them to go and do it. As a lawyer, I don't do this. But the lawyers who do that, I will tell them, go and meet that lawyer. Because before this person will kill you, I would rather have you alive and be in your father's house. So go and get an apartment than for the man to kill you, or than for the woman to kill you. We know of late, we pass through some cases where husband stab their wife. Of late, I saw one girl, one lady. She was operated upon and the husband was beating her. She took the and she carried her hand. Mom is there, but she's coming back in the living room. And then we have to go to the business now. I don't have business. And the government doesn't know why I paid it. But first of all, they killed several. They killed either the father or they took the husband. I don't want to know about the entire thing. And they were angry at the truth. But when they have been able to call it, they have decided to push it and get some more.
say you learn something and you talk about it to talk to you. Small women, small women, talk about this thing to I'm telling you this to go over here and talk to a lot of people who are already, aside, let's see them spiritual, aside, I don't think they are like spiritual, which God is giving money to go. But what is spiritual now? The people who are supposed to die, Amana, who has a touch Amana. That's what God is supposed to die with.
So that's basically generally what this bill is all about. But it's to eliminate discrimination of any form to women, young girls, young boys, youth, and then even for men. But it will favor women, it will favor men, because if the women are empowered, it means the man is empowered too. So please, as I've just said, broaden our horizon on these discussions. So the conversation will begin. I'm sure at least we have a little light on what I have talked about that the bill is all about. So it's called GO Bill, Gender and Equitable Bill. Gender, it used to be Gender and Equal Opportunity Bill. It used to be Gender and Equal Opportunity Bill. It was when we went to present it to the House of Assembly, because it has to pass through them before it can be, before the governor can uh, assent to it. It has to go through first, second, and third reading. So if they have a buy-in, if it goes to the floor, quickly they will pass it. First reading they will allow it to go, second reading they will allow it, the third reading they will allow it. So that's why we had a retreat with them, sponsored by UN Women and the National Institute for Legislative Drafting and Democratic Studies in Abuja. We had it to the former assembly, hoping for them to pass it. But when campaign came for election, everybody wanted to come back a second time. So they didn't. So this one now we discussed with them. So we're still on board with them, hoping that it will pass. So your voices will be heard. Your suggestions, your discussions, your, you know, your observations can be brought in and we can effect some corrections if it's so be. Thank you very much. Very much, ma'am. Thank you, Barrister. The Barrister herself. I think she went through everything. I would truly understand what the GOB truly is now. So now she has set the tone for the dialogue to commence. I want the conversation to begin. What is the role of religious leaders in the GOB field? Thank you very much. So who's going to start? Or what will you do as regards the GO group? Thank you, <coughs> Minister, for the explicit explanation for respect to this particular bill. I listen with a keen interest. I can see the effort you people are putting, which is quite commendable. But then, Alongside of that, I'm the thinker coming from a society like Nigeria, different cultural background, different religious uh, beliefs, and the rest of them. And have a look at how some cultures are. This issue of equality, equality must be thoroughly explained. Because if it is misunderstood, we are going to find difficulties. Because when you look at some instances, some women who are privileged to be in the position of authority, thank God like people like you that are well balanced. You know what is your duty at home, you know what is your duty in the office, and you know what you're supposed to do in the society. That is okay, but not every woman will have that understanding. So we only fully assume the quality is that we are together and working, you are working, who is okay in the home? And then the desired result may not be achieved. That is the area I think we need to truly work on. But aside that, all other issues we have raised are the issues that even in the religious setting, we are battling with. Because all this kind of marginalization and the rest of them, violence at home, sexual harassment and the rest of them are those things we are facing and are those things that we are battling with even in our churches. So if we are able to have maybe a kind of relief, something that will stop all this, it is something good. So people like me, I for one, it is a welcome development. 
if this is passed into law, except those areas I say it needs to be clearly understood. Because people should not take advantage of it. And if they take advantage of it, it will be a very serious problem again. And that is just the area I am emphasizing. <coughs> to me, our role is to keep on encouraging people, the men in particular, to see how we'll be able to at least embrace one another to see that this bill can to stand. Because it is very, very essential. If the women are empowered, it will be of great help as we cite an example of others who have functioned successfully in governance. And we have many who are out there, if given the opportunity, they will be able to perform better. All we want is a better society. And whoever is coming to give us that better society, to me, it is a welcome development. And that will be of great help to us as we live together as citizens of Nigeria. That was our contention when we met with the House of Assembly members. Because we had some of them that had three wives. We had some of them that had four wives. We had some of them that had two. And then we had some of them that had one that still had issues. We said, even the one that finished, I'm giving her right. How is she taking it and all of that? But you know, we're not talking about equality. That's why we said, when, we, when it was the word equality was used, when we heard the concerns from the men, mostly, majorly, the men, and they said that equality would not go. That was why we had to change it to equitable. So it's gender and equitable opportunity bill. Equitable, when you know the difference, the difference between being equitable and being, and you're talking about equality. So we were chosen not to use the word equal again because we are not equal. The men and the men can never be, however you put it. The man was created and he has told us the was before the woman came. So we can't even pay side by side. Just like uh, our daddy has said. I'm a strong advocate of the man giving, giving his peace. I don't play with that. Anytime I want to say, eh, I don't like this thing that I didn't like, because okay, why did I not get it right? So I have to adjust, because he's in charge. So, is equality, uh, sorry, um, equitable now. I know what is equitable is what is just. What is due you as a man? What is due you as a woman? What is due, what is due to a man, to a society, to a community, to a religious body is what we're talking about. If this is due that women should have this opportunity, why not open it up for them? If it's due that the girls in Kaduna State, all of them, no girls should be left outside of after school. And no father should think that a boy is more important than a girl. This is what we are trying to advocate. We know what is trying to throw or try to say, give women opportunity. Empower them, make them be a blessing to you and your children and generation and to Kaduna State. So it's just this equitable opportunity now that we're talking about. So it's no more equality. That's why the name is changed. Before it was gender equal opportunity bill, but now it's gender and equitable opportunity bill. Thank you. Appreciate you for that wonderful message. I only wanted to add what you said because it was the question when you say your husband was beating the child, they are used the merciless bit, and then you are angry. That's no, I wasn't angry, I was, I, I didn't show anger. Uh, I was pain. You were within no, I was pain. Okay. No, there's no difference between anger and pain. Okay. You, can be, you can be unhappy. About something. Okay. But it doesn't mean that you're angry. That is there are different things. That is low. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't angry. I didn't say angry. So that is low. I thank you for that. Is it? A man had such a problem that came to me as a pastor. Yes, sir. And I thank God it is not you. Yes, sir. Another one, a lawyer, and also I think was a chief judge. So he was, she desired let him always carry her to the office. Because she loved the way he cried. Well, the husband agreed. But one day he came to the office to pick her. And she wasted his time, and you know, an angry man. <laughs> and they know the forms that you don't want. And he was, oh, 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 come out, come out of there. One said, okay. If not, because you're my husband, I would have made you. I thought I'd give you the last one. <laughs> if they told me, so he was embarrassed. And one day he came and said, What do I do with the wife? If you are the pastor, what will you advise? <laughs> that is my answer, Professor. He actually learned a lot 
And if you also look at it, uh, I think majority of what you're talking about are things that we uh, preach in the church, and I'm sure also that uh, is also preached in the mosque. Uh, one of the problems that we have is that a lot of us grew up seeing so many things that people are now implementing. It's like it has become a part of what, or let me use that word, has become our default setting. That children grew up seeing their parents beating traffic. So they think it's a normal thing. Children grew up, you know, seeing uh, fathers beating their wives. They feel it's a normal thing. One of the things I've seen is we actually have a lot of work to do. You know, even if being like this is past, we as pastors, ministers, imams, uh, lecturers, people that actually occupy places where you interface with people, we just have to keep sensitizing people, keep talking about it. My, my son is in uh, Futmina. And then the one next to him is a girl. I have five girls and one boy. So my daughter is in Binham. And my own brother came to me. He said, why did you take your daughter to Binham and your son to Futina? He said, I should swap it. And I asked him, why did he say that? He said, he's your son. He should have the best. He's your son. You can imagine because in Binham, she's paying like uh, one point. 1.5 for school fees, and my son's school fees is just 100,000. Mm -hmm. And he's doing a uh, computer engineering here. I told him, I said, he, he's doing well there, and that was his choice. I didn't choose that school for him. My son chose his school. I gave him that liberty to. I remember a few days ago, he told me, he said, now that I'm about graduating, how do you want my life to be? I said, well, from what you have learned from me, we sat down to talk. Why am I saying this? We have to get to a place where we don't discriminate anymore. We have women that can do a whole lot. That's the truth. In our church, I give women opportunities to do a lot of things. Why? Because I see that they have the ability to do those things. So you don't subject people because uh, maybe the person is a woman. There are some, yeah. Women actually need to deal with their emotions, but there are some of them that can really do a lot of things. And I feel opportunities should be given to them. So one of the things I'm trying to say is we should start teaching these things, teach our children. At the age of five, seven, six, they should know how to treat women, how to talk to women, how to do things at home. If these things are not taught when they are still young, we will still have the same problem that we are having. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Um, my return to start on the already established um, protocol. Um, like she said, we are gender ambassadors. And um, what brought us here is the policy dialogue whereby we can give our best, our voice to our women folk so that there can be, if not equality, there should be equity equal opportunity so that what a man can do he said the woman can do even better and this is true we've all seen it to give them opportunity will be having this patriarchy system or kind of um, society whereby male dominates everything but we are saying let the women come on board give them equal opportunity so that you can see what they are made of and um, I want to thank Zamani Foundation for having us here and for giving us this opportunity so that we can give our voice so that the women who will come on board and I want us here to give our best so that whatever we are going to discuss here let it be fruitful I think I will rest my case here. I wish us best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cho, Mrs. Lola, Yaki. So, before we see much of our time, we'll continue with our dialogue session.
So please, if you have any contribution, please just can you raise your hand and I'll bring the mic to you. Without test, after this contribution, I might be able to for the witness. Um, we, the religious leaders, are saddled with the responsibility of enlightenment. Enlightenment for there are certain roles we play in the line of participation. Play the role of a counselor, also play the role of a teacher. So, what contributes to this is actually the mindset of people. We need to work on the belief, uh, belief system of these people. Uh, it will take time for you to change the mind of someone. And I think one of the principles of teaching is for you to repeat something over and over again so that people may get to hear it more and more so that the time they should be able to adopt it. I want to speak to us uh, using a, a life example. Sometimes we tend to focus on the physics of men, uh, thinking that men have the power to do certain things, looking at the ability they have. But I think we should also give room for skill, we should also give room for qualities, and we should also give room for knowledge. For instance, there are certain offices in the church that require expertise. There are certain processes in the church that require knowledge. Uh, like the post of a financial secretary. You don't call someone who happens to be a farmer to come and assume that role. You need someone that is intelligent, someone that happens to be an accountant to manage that office. So if there is a woman that happens to be an expert in that field of study, she should be given an opportunity to serve even in the church so that the work of the gospel also should be effective. There should be accountability. But sometimes we tend to keep them aside, and then there are no people with expertise to assume such offices. We just look for anybody to assume that office. And at the end of the day, we find ourselves with one thing or the other that is not actually right, even in the Church of God. So I think there should be an enlightenment on people to focus on education, people to focus on the skill that some people do have. People should focus on qualities that people should be able to put in certain uh, offices or certain systems. I think the contribution is not mainly physical. The contribution is a mental contribution. Our participation should be something that we have upstairs. Uh, if I could remember, uh, during my secondary school days, it was a lady that was leading the class. So the other classes were like, Ba Maza, a class now when you see Mata and Suna did it. So she had the knowledge and she was the one leading us. If there are certain women that have that capacity, that have that knowledge, should be given opportunity to serve so that we should be able to have balance in certain things. So if we keep aside all of these qualifications, all of these skills and expertise, and we focus on some traditions and culture that does not give women permission to participate in some of these things, so there might not be efficiency in some of the things we are doing. And I am, I am proud of uh, this particular bill that is coming because sometimes in the Church of God, there's this thing they used to say, most especially we that are, that are from the Orthodox churches, and most especially we that happens to be young pastors. I have a case right now. Uh, the man is cheating on the wife, and then he's also beating her. She brought the reports to me. We sit them down. We try to settle it, but he's still doing it again. And the least the church could do is we administer church discipline to that person. So sometimes he will say, what the discipline is, it's just for him not to take the Holy Communion, just for him not to participate in that office that he used to participate as an official in the church. But you see, with programs like this, if they are aware that there are certain organizations outside that could come after him, so I think maybe it does to this spiritual debate. So I think we should make enlightenment for sins like this so that the people should be able to be aware of it and we should be able to give balance to certain things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I want to contribute a little bit before I take my leave. I'm sorry. First and foremost, I'm happy to be in this kind of meeting, honestly. So, Barista, well done. 
how you said something that a woman should be included in some part of the executives in the church for leadership. Last three weeks, the President Kadi, Chairman of Kaduna, called my spiritual father, we are together. And then he was advising me, please, in this you are regime, make sure you include women if you want to get it right. <laughs> so which means my spiritual father is not wrong. <laughs> and then secondly, I want to talk to spiritual leaders, most of the women pastors. There is a lady that is serving jail tabs. This thing happened to Rumi. They might have issues with the husband and they have pictures. She made an attempt twice to kill him, more than him. He escaped. So she now went back to her parents. After a year, the Reverend and the church deacons insisted that this marriage must work. So they went and brought the woman. That very day that she returned home, the other went to work. She told the children, please, when it is night, sleep. Arm robbers are coming. And you know, a child of 18 years can be very, very busy. He wants to do arm robbers and watch arm robbers on the telly. So I want to see them live. The first one is around 10 years. So the husband came. She cooked delicious for him. He cracked jokes. He thinks that all is over. Then they went to bed. They had good sex. Not knowing she kept a knife by her side. And when they had sex, he stepped off. She now stabbed him in his chest. He was shouting. She opened the window. The son was, the son beat. And he saw what happened. She was shouting, Abrova, Abrova, the neighbor's came. It was that boy that testified against his mother. It wasn't an Abrova, his mother stabbed his father. And that is a warning for us as pastors. I will tell pastors, when you come to family issue, church is second. Family is first. God bless you. I take my. I also want to pay my honest to appreciate the organizers of this very meeting to thank our barrister for that uh, wonderful presentation. I think the question is the role of religious leader in uh, promoting uh, this uh, discussion. And when you mention that a judge has conducted 50 or carried out uh, 50 divorces this year, just from January, the it was alarming. A lot of things were moving in my heart with this. Is it feminism? What, what is the problem? Our mothers have their own issues in their time, but what is the problem that is causing the rapid increase uh, of divorce among married uh, people. Will it be that, although you have reframed uh, this thing, it is to them just knowing that the time has been from this gender, equality, and feminism movement. For me, I don't see any woman as being bound or being in bondage that is looking for freedom. And I have preached that over the years. And for, except for a woman that has low self-esteem, who is not ready to pursue her purpose and her drive that will be seen that somebody or a man is trying to leave. But this thing, I think it's a narrative that we also need to, I've also, I've always looked at this because the male uh, gender that actually needs uh, liberation in our days because among uh, my sisters, if they were buying one treasure for us, they would buy this card for them. If they are sending us to early age, they are sending them to good school. And when they marry, it is so for me I think women have always been at the leading, except for those who are unlucky marrying bad men. But you find out that the man carry a lot of lots. So I think there is also a need of awareness by the, the, the women, the gender themselves, that we are not in bondage. 
But this is also affecting, but I think uh, in carrying out this very campaign, there is a need to actually strike a balance so that uh, uh, in the drive to find this, when a woman becomes a career woman and care is not taken, uh, the, the entire family is scattered. And that is why today we have the family is the one suffering. The father has is on the one is on the one is on the one is on the one. So I think there is a need for a holistic uh, engagement time so that one can be bringing uh, or trying to bring a solution on one side to create create problems in the other side. Just a lot of young people are even afraid to work. But before now, if this is more than that, this is about anything you want to.
to lost people. Thank 